There has been much debate on the internet recently as to whether the true shape of the earth is that of a globe or as to whether it is flat. In this video I hope to demonstrate how what we see in the sky corresponds exactly to what we see in reality and how the globe theory actually works. I do not intend to use computer graphics in my demonstration or mathematics. Just real life earth and sun models. To create this demonstration I first had to create a model of the earth. This I did by using a large beach ball. I attached it to a wooden frame and tilted it to an angle of 23 degrees. The same angle as the tilt of the earth to the sun in space. On my globe model I marked out the direction of its rotation and also a few compass points. One at the equator, one in the northern hemisphere and another in the south. Those in the north and south I positioned at approximately 55 degrees north and another one at 55 degrees in the south. These correspond roughly to the latitudes of the British Isles in the north and Tierra del Fuego in Argentina in the south. To create the viewpoint of an observer on my sphere I used my smartphone camera and attached the phone to the globe using tape. The position of the camera lens gives a very good image of what it would be like to be an observer on my sphere, I attached the camera to the different locations I had marked out in the northern and southern hemispheres and also at the equator and recorded video from these locations. I also created a model of the sun using a flashlight placed at the end of my garden. I made sure the flashlight was positioned level with center of my globe before starting the experiment. By positioning the frame holding the globe at three different angles we can simulate the Earth's tilt towards or away from the sun at the summer and winter solstices. We can also simulate the equinoxes by positioning it at a right angle to the sun. The following footage shows what an observer on Earth would see looking towards sunrise and sunset at various time of the year. I started with filming what you would see on the winter solstice from the northern hemisphere. I filmed the results in both daytime and nighttime conditions in order to demonstrate what we are actually seeing. Filming in darkness gives a very good simulation of the sun's true movements through the sky. Here we are seeing from the position of an observer in the British Isles looking due south of the winter solstice. The sun moves upwards to the right and passes low over the south meridian point before setting towards the southwest. This next clip shows the view looking north in the southern hemisphere at midwinter. Notice how the sun's distance above the horizon is virtually the same as the distance above the horizon in the northern hemisphere, but this time we are looking towards the northern meridian not south, and the sun is rising in the northeast and setting in the northwest. Notice too that the sun is moving along the horizon from right to left, not from left to right as it did in the northern hemisphere. This is exactly what we observe when we look at the actual sun in its motion across the sky. This video taken from Christchurch in New Zealand shows the sun's motion from right to left. Just what you would expect to see as an observer situated in the southern hemisphere. This time we are looking southeast in the southern hemisphere at the time of the summer solstice. Notice how the sun moves much higher in the sky as it rises. It is also rising in the southeast and setting in the southwest. This next clip shows the summer solstice from the northern hemisphere. From here we see the sun rise in the northeast and set in the northwest. But also notice how high it rises in the sky. In fact let's take a closer look, is the sun coming towards us from the horizon before passing overhead? Does it appear to be moving towards us over a flat plane? And again at sunset, is the sun moving away from us, is it getting further away as it nears the horizon? I leave you to decide this for yourselves. Next we move to the equator at the time of the equinoxes. As the sun sets in the exact west it appears to come from straight overhead and move directly downwards to the horizon. And again, this time looking east towards sunrise. The sun moves straight upwards out of the horizon. 
This is exactly what we see in the real world as anyone living close to the equator will tell you. For the next part of my experiment I needed to create a model of the flat earth. Firstly I had to find out a few facts and figures to create an accurate model. According to many sources on the internet the flat earth has a diameter of around 25,000 miles. Orbiting above it in a clockwise direction is the sun. According to flat earth theory the sun is a distance of 3,000 miles away when directly overhead. It also moves during the year from a position over the northern part of the earth, across the equator to a position over the southern earth. This is what creates the seasons. After establishing these facts I calculated the relative distances involved and transferred them to my flat earth model. I also marked on the model the same points I had marked on my globe. The British Isles in the north and Tierra del Fuego in the south. I then needed to create a scale so that I could create a map of my flat earth on the ground. The scale I used was to make every 1000 miles on the flat earth equivalent to 1 meter on my model. I then divided this figure by 2. This gave me a diameter of 12.5 meters. The sun would be located 1.5 meters above my flat earth model. I then began marking the scale down model on the ground before setting up my camera again to create an observer's viewpoint. I once again used my flashlight as my sun but this time attached it to a piece of wood 1.5 meters from the end. I then moved this around my model using the wood to keep my sun at a constant height above the ground. I made many attempts to try and create a sunrise or sunset. No matter how I positioned my camera and no matter which line of the sun's path I followed I found it impossible to create anything that even resembled a sunset or sunrise, my sun was always too high and never even went close to the horizon. In fact the only time my sun even came close to the horizon was when I positioned my observer on one side of the model and my sun on the opposite side. This would have been equivalent to the sun being 25,000 miles away. Even at this distance it was still seen to be several degrees above the horizon. With such an obvious inconsistency with which the height of the sun appeared in the sky I at first thought that I had made a mistake in the calculation regarding the height of the sun and I checked the figures several times to make sure they were correct. They were indeed correct. At the scale I had used the sun would indeed be positioned 1.5 meters above my flat earth model and my model would be 12.5 meters in diameter. I would encourage anyone who disputes the findings I have made here during my experiment to go out and try this for yourselves. What I have done is not difficult to do, and everything you need can be purchased easily and cheaply from any hardware store. The only mathematical calculations I have used have been in the determining of the size of my scaled down version of my flat earth and its dimensions. All the dimensions and distances I have used have been taken from actual sources of the flat earth society. There are many other inconsistencies involved with the observations of the sun and its rising and setting points on the flat earth model. These inconsistencies I may address at a later time, but for now I hope you enjoyed my video and please do go out there and try this for yourselves.